Everybody, welcome back to the shop today. I'm building a wainscoting recessed panel wall with pilasters and a bottom mantle for everything to sit on, uh, almost like a hearth of a fireplace. But what I need to do is cut the pieces on a 45 bevel return and they're eight and a quarter inches wide. Now, most miter saws, you can't do that standing up. I don't think any miter saw will let you cut eight and a quarter standing up. Usually they only go up to about six and a half on, a, on a, a standing cut. So what you need to do is you can see here, I removed my miter saw upper fences, put those to the side. And most, 99% of the miter saws out there, they just have a thumb wheel screw in the back, loosen that thumb wheel screw, slide right off. And now on this piece right here, this is the piece of red oak that I'm working with here. I milled it down to three quarters of an inch thick. It's eight and a quarter wide. That's what I had to cut it to. Those are the dimensions I need. And I need to make it 70 and an eighth inches long, but I need to cut 45s on the end to make a 45 mitered return. It's not gonna happen standing up. As you can see, even if you move the blade guard, you're hitting the blade. You're not gonna get it. So we're gonna do that on the flat. And the way we're gonna do that is by beveling the miter saw to either side, depending on which side you cut it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it locked in place and I'm gonna oversize the cut. I need 70 and 1 8 long, so I'm gonna cut it to 72 inches to give me the extra clearance that I need. And as you can see, I only have uh, a 10 and a half foot or 11 foot run on my minor source station. So trying to cut this piece in the first shot, I'm gonna hit my dust collector, I'm gonna hit my wall, I don't have enough room. So what I'll do is get a pencil and mark out 70 and 1 8, and then I'll give myself an extra two, three inches to play with for the miter. Okay, now, so at this point, I cut it square to a couple of inches longer than I need. But now I need to make a 45 cut on the end here and then cut it to length and do a 45 return on the other end. So like I said before, you can't stand it up. So if you have a dual bevel saw, which hopefully you do, or even a single bevel saw, you can just you know bevel it one way and then flip the board over. You, on this particular saw, you loosen the back and then you pull this piece out here and you dump it to 45. Then you lock it in place. Just by tightening the back, this way it doesn't move. And you give yourself the clearance you need. Okay. Now what you wanna do is bring your piece that you're gonna cut right up to the saw. And this is why you're giving yourself an extra couple of inches here because you're going to be cutting on a steep angle here. So I'm gonna get as close to the edge as I can get. And then I'm gonna run my cut and I'll have the 45 on the bevel. Then we can flip it the other way or we could just turn the piece of wood around and cut the other side to length in the same bevel manner. So if you have a single bevel saw, you can actually leave it in this position here. If you have the dual bevel, you can cut this side, then you can slide it down, and then you can swing it to the other side, and then cut the adjoining miter on the other piece there. Okay, now I need to cut my returns at a 45, and I need them to be four and three quarters wide. So the easiest way to do it is to bevel the saw first. Cut that 45, and then measure from the end and mark out four and three quarters and cut that at 90, rather than trying to hit that miter, because it's much more accurate to hit the line at a 90 degree cut.
Okay, so you'll notice that I made a slight pencil mark on the fence on my saw. What that's gonna let me do is bevel the saw again, cut my 45, and then I'm gonna just pin it right up against that mark after I cut the 45, put it right there, and then I'm gonna cut my 90. This way I have equal pieces because I could have set up a stop block, but I would have had to clamp it to the fence. This is another easy way you can do it, just to make a mark on the fence and you can erase it later. Okay guys, so here is my main piece and my mitered return. And something that I want to point out is that I cut these in such a way that it was a continuous grain pattern. So when you cut that 45, you want to make sure you got that grain pattern wrapping around to the other side. So now when I put them together, and I'm going to have to even these up because my bench is not flat in this spot, but just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about before I glue and nail it together. Now you can see how the grain wraps around and returns back to the wool. Well, it's just a nice little feature that people are gonna notice when they look at it. It's one continuous piece of wood, have that grain wrap around. Same thing I like to do when I make drawer fronts on dressers. All right guys, let's nail this thing together. As to save time, because you've seen me do it a million times, pocket screw a nail board to the back. Well, what that did, I'll just give you a look in there. That's the nail board. There's two functions for that. Number one, it helped me keep everything square, so you can see that my miters are perfectly square. Nice 45 degree angle. I got nice tight miters. I have something to nail this to the wall with, screw this to the wall. I'm actually gonna, when I put this down, this is going at the bottom, and I'm going to put a spacer block in here just to stiffen this up a little bit. It's not gonna really matter because there's going to be um, a shelf top on it with a three quarter inch overhang. That's gonna be also solid three quarter oak. And then we're gonna stain it and I gotta spray it with some polyurethane. But today's video was just about cutting 45 degrees or angled cuts on on the flat using the bevel function of your miter saw. Hope it was very uh, informative to you. Hopefully you can use this uh, if you have this problem. Just remember to remove the fences, the upper fences from your miter saw, or you know, if you have the saw set up on a stand where you don't have a fence in the way, like when I go out to a job and I have it on the contractor stand, all I have to do is loosen the screws, slide them out of the way and tighten them back up and I'm able to bevel the saw back and forth. All right guys, so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. I'll put all the links down in the description below and thanks for watching as always and I'll see you guys next time.